welcome to this week's edition of the course. Um, we are here in our chapel and we today we're going to be um, shooting a mock wedding. Tiffany is behind me setting up this wonderful um, stage for us. Um, we're going to get getting some models in. Um, and so we're going to be going through the sections of the day and kind of walking through some processes and the settings and the things you need to be thinking about for different parts of the wedding day and hopefully be really informative. But however, before we get into the actual live shooting of it, um, there's a couple of things I wanted to go over just to reinforce what we talked about over the last couple of weeks um, in, the, in the courses. So the first thing when it comes to live shooting on the wedding day is when it comes to filming, uh, you have to think in terms of two cameras. Um, it's paramount because it, for terms of redundancy. So for example, if one camera goes down for whatever reason, your battery runs out, you run out of memory card, you drop it, God forbid, um, you've then got your, spe your safety camera so, uh, here to cover the action. Also, in terms of when you're editing, it's nice to be able to cut to two different angles. If you think about the films that we watch, very rarely will they ever stick on one camera. It's constantly cutting between two different angles and that just makes it varied and really interesting. So here's my safety camera. So for the sake of the whole of like the sections that we go through, this is gonna be camera B. And I've got my um, zoom lens on, 24 to 70. As I said, if I had to pick one lens, um, it'd probably be, when I started out, it would probably be a 24 to 70 because I'm yet to find my style. It's a real versatile lens. So I've got a 24 to 70. I've rocked up to the church. I can see that it's quite a smaller venue. So I'm probably gonna have it at 24, so the widest that it can go. And I'm gonna be setting that in the corner, probably there for different parts of the day or different around different places. But generally I know this is my wide camera. This is my wide setting. So this is my safety camera. Um, and this is the camera that I'm gonna be shooting handheld. And this is gonna have my 50 mil, my favorite lens on it, the 50 mil, one, Sony 50 mil 1.2. Um, and it's gonna be on this camera. And this is gonna be shot handheld. So a couple of things you need to be thinking about when it comes to settings. Firstly, always make sure that you've got the same picture profile for both cameras. Um, depending on the camera that you use with Sony, it has eight different picture profiles, or you can use the creative profiles. Um, when I first started, just if you are a Sony shooter, I used to use the autumn leaves profile that's built in uh, because it meant I had to do less editing when I got it into the camera. Um, now I use a picture profile because I like to add a little bit of editing, but that's something that you can get into as you go down the line. But the number one thing you wanna think about is make sure that you've got both the same settings on both cameras. The second thing you wanna make sure is about white balance. So if you're starting out, most cameras, auto white balance does a pretty good job most of the time. I shoot on manual white balance because I like to have everything manual. Um, but when, when you first start, it's a lot to think about. You could probably pick auto white balance. Again, that's why if you've got the same white camera, it's really helpful because if I put both on auto white balance, the chances are the camera's gonna see the scene exactly the same. And that's generally what you want. You wanna make sure that both cameras when you get that footage into the computer to edit, they look like they've been shot the same. So when you're cutting back and forth, it looks the same. The other thing you wanna be thinking about in terms of settings is um, the shutter rule. So as a rule of thumb, um, if I'm shooting 50 frames a second, so generally, as I said in one of the last week's videos, I generally shoot HD 50 frames per second. And the reason is that slow-mo is your friend. And HD is a much more easy, easier uh, file to work with in terms of size and computing power and when you're editing. So HD 50, HD 50. So the shutter rule is that you don't wanna go, we times the, the 50 frames per second by 200, you generally don't wanna go on your shutter below 100, 100 of a second. You basically wanna stay about 100. I don't, I'm not really uh, legalistic on whether I go higher, but I don't want to go lower than one hundredth uh, of a uh, hundredth of a second on the shutter rule because when you slow it down, that will affect the footage. So if you're going to shoot at 50 frames per second, never go lower than 100. If you're going to shoot 100 frames per second, never go lower than 200. If you're going to shoot 25 frames per second, never go lower than 150th. 
that's basically what you want to think about. And so those are the two things that you want to think about um, and really make sure that you've got nailed. And then the second thing you want to think about is autofocus. So on this camera in my hand, I most likely will shoot autofocus. Again, I'm shooting on a Sony A7S III. The autofocus on this thing is bananas. It's amazing. It tracks the eye. So I pretty much trust this camera in most settings. However, for the wide camera, I might not always shoot in autofocus. And this is the reason. If you think about it with autofocus, because I probably won't be manning this camera, if there's a lot of movement in the scene, I don't want the camera to get confused as to what I'm fixing, uh, you know, I want to be focusing on. So I probably will keep it at manual focus because I can then determine what I'm going to be focusing on and it won't move from there. So that if someone walks in front of the camera, the camera won't try and switch focus. It will stay on what I want it to be focusing on. Now, the great thing about a wedding, if you think about it, when it comes to the vows, speeches, most times people aren't really moving. So if I set this wide camera on the groom, for example, when he's at the top of the aisle, and I, and I set the manual focus on him for vows or for the bride coming down the aisle or anything like that, I know that that's gonna be on focus. So if, for example, if I set it on manual focus um, and set it at an aperture of maybe like 5.6, just to be safe, so I've got, I know I've got a lot of depth of field and a lot of things are gonna be in focus. I know as the bride comes down the aisle, she might not be in focus at the top, but by the time she gets about halfway down the aisle and she meets the groom at the top of the altar or the bride meets the bride or the groom meets the groom, then I know that those, that scene is gonna be in focus. And no matter what, who passes in front of my camera, it's gonna be okay. The alternative, if I set it on autofocus, it might be that I try and set it on the bride, but then the camera gets confused, it might focus on the groom, it might focus on a congregation member, and then you've got the wrong thing in focus. So that's, those are the two things that you really wanna be thinking about, your shutter speed, your autofocus and manual focus. And then beyond that, you wanna be thinking about your settings, white balance, and picture profiles and making sure that they're the same in camera. And then what are you gonna be shooting? Are you gonna be shooting 1080? 50 frames per second, 25 per second, 25 frames per second, or 100 frames per second. Now, one last thing you could consider is you could shoot your safety camera at 4K. And why would you do that? Because remember, if I'm delivering in HD, like I said in last week's video or the week before, if I'm shooting in 4K, that gives me creative options to crop in and it almost becomes like a third camera. Imagine we're shooting the bride coming down the aisle at 24 frames per second. If I'm delivering in HD and this is being shot in 4K, I could actually crop in and it kind of gives me a different um, angle, kind of a different look. So between the two cameras, I've actually now got three different looks, okay? Um, also, the great thing about the A7S III is I can shoot 4K 50 frames per second for things like the bride come down the aisle, which again gives me even more creative options. Again, my rule of thumb is always keep things simple. So basically, I don't really, usually with, you know, when it comes to things like this, you don't really have the time to think these things through. So for safety, I keep everything up 1080, 50 frames per second. That's my go-to settings. And it just means I don't have to really think about it. And I know they're both the same. If I've got a little bit of time, I'm considering it. I'm in a certain setting where I might need it, then I might switch to 4K. So again, that's something else that you wanna be thinking about. Now, all throughout, these videos as we go to each scene, I will be referring to my safety cam as cam B and this cam as cam A, and we will be cutting between both to show you what the different scenes look like and how you could put that together. Now, the last thing I want you to be thinking about is this term called B-roll. What is B-roll? So B-roll is basically any footage that you'll add on top of your main footage. So for example, let's say we're pretending we're shooting the vows and I have my wide camera and I have my, um, my telephoto lens handheld, I'm gonna be switching between these two for the vows. But to make my footage interesting, I might introduce shots that maybe might be a shot of a, a window or a light or something around the altar and lay that on top of them, uh, on top of the vows. And we call that B-roll because it's just adding visual interest to whatever's going on underneath. It can be quite repetitive and maybe a little bit boring for the viewer if you're constantly just sticking on one angle or sticking on the, the actual main angle, uh, main 
action that's happening. So B-roll is great because it adds visual interest and you can cut away, but at the same time, if you've got the vowels or the speeches or something going on underneath, the viewer kind of knows that you're talking about that C. And we'll be referring to that as well. So whenever, throughout these videos, if I say camera B, camera A, or B-roll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking, to, uh, talking about. Now, one thing to consider if you're gonna shoot handheld, um, the image stabilization on these cameras, or especially the Sony cameras, are amazing. They're like five stops. So I am happy to shoot handheld. However, there are certain things that you need to think about in terms of technique. The first thing is, is when it comes to shooting with, your, with a camera, you always want three points of um, stabilization. And so when we're shooting handheld, the three points are hand, right hand, left hand, and then my head. If I haven't got my glasses on, I'll put my glasses off, and my head will act as the third point of stabilization. So you can see here that this camera right now is pretty, that's pretty rock solid. And when we cut to this footage during each scene, you'll see that it's pretty stable. And again, if there are any micro jitters, slow-mo is your friend. You can slow things down. Now, the other thing you have to think about is your arms. You wanna keep your arms locked in and solid and close, and you wanna keep the camera to your head, and that will give you the best chance of you know, getting really stable footage when it comes to handheld footage. The other thing is, is if, you move, if you wanna move the camera or pan right and left, and again, we'll be thinking and talking about these things, you don't wanna be moving from your wrists because that introduces shake. You wanna be moving from your body. So for example, if I wanted to do a pan left to right, I would lock my arms in, put it against my head, and I'd move my torso like this, which is way better than doing this because that has, you know, it's not as stabilized. Again, if you wanted to do a pan upward, this is gonna look a little bit funny, but you get used to it. You might wanna spread your legs a little bit like this to give you a state, you know, stable um, foundation. Lock your arms in, put it against your head. And if I wanted to pan up, I would mo again, move my torso. Again, I'm thinking slow-mo is gonna be my friend when it comes to the editing process. And I'm gonna be thinking about those things. And then the final thing that you wanna be thinking about is you never press record on the action. So if the bride is coming down the aisle or if they're doing vows, if you're hoping to capture that moment, you don't wanna be pressing record before that, uh, as that moment happens. You wanna press it at least three, four, five seconds before that moment happens, at least, and you wanna have your camera in place. So for example, if I was shooting Charlie, our cameraman, and he was about to move, I wouldn't just go, okay, now I'm gonna shoot. I would get in place, I would get ready. And this is where anticipation comes in and a learning moment. And I'd have it in place and I'd press record. So I'd be pressing record now, knowing that I want the moment that I want is gonna happen five seconds later. So even if I just wanted a still shot of Charlie as he's holding his camera, I'd be locking it in, I'd be pressing record and I'd be holding it like this. And then once the moment's finished, I don't put the camera down or stop pressing record. I keep recording through because you never know what's gonna happen. And trust me, you will thank yourself in the edit because psychologically, for some reason, when we're shooting live, we always think we've shot longer than we have when the truth is, is not true. Right, Charlie? Like, yeah, the camera's going, yes. Right, so he knows what I'm talking about. So when I press record here, I'm waiting. I'm now getting Charlie, I'm shooting at him. And when I think I've got the moment I want, I'm still not putting it down. I'm waiting three, four, five seconds, and then I stop recording, or then I put my hand down. Most of the time, I put my hand down, and then I press, I stop recording, just in case something else happens and I can bring it back up and get that moment again if something happens. So I hope that's everything. That's kind of covered everything that you need to be thinking about when we're shooting. Don't worry, as we go through each section, I'm going to be Go, re, you know, regurgitating these things, reinforcing these things, um, and going over these things again and again and again because they're really important. So imagine now we are in the ceremony. So the first thing I do, um, so let's pretend I've shot all the B-roll and now the vicar or reverend today, uh, you're, you're going to notice him a lot throughout this video as filling in, but Cam is now our vicar or reverend today. He's just been ordained online. <laughs> Amazing what you can get online nowadays. Um, and so the first thing I will do when I come to the church is I will, or the registrar, is I will always say hello to the celebrant. And I'll introduce myself, say hi. Welcome. Reverend Father, my name's Mick. Pleasure. Uh, um, um, really excited about today. Just wondered, 
and I will ask, what are the house rules? Because I want to get on their good side. I want to be respectful of any traditions, any religious things, anything that's holy, anything that's legal. And so I ask for the rules. Thankfully, he's a super cool reverend, and you said I can do whatever I want. The harder your party, the better, my friend. Oh, that's amazing, fantastic. Now, as I've introduced myself, I will also ask if it's okay to mic him. Now, remember what I said when I... Um, Actually, in real, if I was shooting a real uh, wedding, because of the size of this venue, I probably would actually use a Sony TX650. Um, but again, because when you're first starting out, we want to make this as simple as, as possible. Look how easy it's going to be to mic him. Remember, we need our audio. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to press record. It's now recording. I'm now going to pop that in his jacket. That is now going to pick up everything that he's saying. Don't forget that he's going to be probably doing most of the speaking throughout the ceremony. Then I have another TX650, which is going to come and I'm going to go to Pat. Now, this is probably the first time I'm going to see the groom. Make sure you say hello. Hello. Are you excited about getting married? Yes. Fantastic. Super. Yeah, cool. Uh, it's the first time he's met his bride. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know who's coming down the aisle. Um, so again, I'm turning it on um, and I'm pressing record and then I'm popping in his lapel jacket. Now, Bearing in mind, if you think about it, when they do the vows, they're going to be turned and facing each other. That mic is going to be enough to pick up the bride and it's going to be enough to pick up him. So I've got both of those people covered. Now, the other thing you might want to do is if we, if we were going to have a reading, let's pretend that the reading was going to happen over here. I will ask, where is the reading happening? And I will put the, the mic like there. So that's picking up the reading. That will also then up, act as my backup mic to get anything just in case these two other mics go down. So I've got my two sources of audio, okay? Uh, but for today's purposes, I'm gonna whack it in um, Pat's pocket and it's all there, right. So before game time happens, I'm also now gonna set up my B camera. Remember we said we always have our safety camera. Now with your safety camera, you've got loads of choices. This is gonna be on my wide angle. So it's gonna be on 24, I'm looking at the room, and the thing I have to bear in mind is that I do not want to get in my wide camera shot and I do not want the photographer, if possible, to get into the wide camera shot. It's not always possible. So if I put the wide camera on this side, I'm generally going to shoot from the other side. If I put the wide camera on that side, I'm generally going to shoot from this side because that way I know I'm never walking in my shot. So if I have a nice spot at the front, I'm going to set my wide camera for the widest angle possible. And the great thing here about 24 is I know uh, we can see our bride at the back, but I know I've got my bride coming down and I know I've got Pat in the shot. So I'm going to get that whole shot. I'm going to stick it on manual focus and I'm going to stick it at um, a high aperture. So let's put it at uh, 4.5. My ISO is at 6,400, which on the A7S III, Great low light performance is not a problem whatsoever. I'm shooting at HD, um, HD 50, so my shutter speed's at 100. I'm at five, I'm focusing on Pat. But because I'm at wide angle and because Pat is in focus, I'm still gonna get a lot of Faz as she comes down the aisle. I'm still gonna get a lot of her and I'm gonna get the critical moment when they see each other at the first time at the top of the aisle. Now, so I will go for this position if I can get it. In this case, I'm probably going to shoot from this side, so I'm going to put it on this side. The other position I might take is at the back of the room. Um, behind, you don't have to come around here, but behind, behind here. So this is another position I could have that camera because, remember, it's my safety. And the great thing is, it's going to get Pat's face and it's going to get Faz as she walks down the aisle and they see each other for the first time. The only problem with that is I'm probably going to be in the shot, but that's okay because what will happen is you'll see that once they meet at the top of the aisle, there's gonna be a bit where there's, you know, they're gonna face each other, the vicar's gonna do some housekeeping. I move out of the shot, I know that my safety's running and I've got the whole back of the, um, the back of the, the congregation, the back of the scene, and I've got everything there. So remember, it's your safety camera, so it's up to you where you place it. For today's purposes, because we have full control, I'm gonna put it over here. So I'm gonna to choose to put it on this side. Um, and I'm going to put it up wide and I'm going to focus on Pat's body. Now, with manual focus, the thing I use on here is called focus peaking. And focus peaking basically means that anything in focus when you're manual focus goes red. So I don't know if you can see here, 
Um, well, it would be easier if I did on that light. You can see that if it's in focus, the red outline is, is highlighting red and that's showing me what's in focus. If I end out, great thing about Sony's is you can punch in focus and you can actually check. Not all cameras have that punch in focus, but for manual focus, I think that's really cool, especially whilst you're recording. And now I know that's definitely in focus. So because we're going for pat, I'm gonna go over here again. I'm gonna set my manual focus. And I'm gonna make sure Pat's in focus, the top, yeah, he's in focus. Remember it's F5, so I can take liberties. I've got a nice shot here, I'm gonna press record. Because there's no, um, there's no time limit on the A7S III, I, I know I can just leave it. So with most of the new Sony cameras, there's no time limit. I'm not sure about other makes, but with the Sony's there's no time limit. So I can leave it running the whole ceremony if I want. It's my safety camera. I know Pat's in focus. I know Faz is gonna be in focus. And now I will take my position. Now, bearing in mind, I'm going quite slow here. At a real wedding, this is happening really fast. So it pays to get there a little bit ahead of time to have all this corrected. So I know I've got my audio. I know I've got my wide camera and now I'm getting ready for the bride come down the aisle. The vicar has given me permission to stand in the middle. I've negotiated with the photographer where he's gonna stand or she's gonna stand so I'm not in their way. And now I can take my shot. Now, let's say that the vicar has said you can only take one spot and you can't be down the center of the aisle. If that's the case, I'm probably gonna pick this. I'm gonna pick that spot and I'll tell you why. No matter what anybody says, the bride is the star of the show, okay? If you've got two brides, then they're both the star of the show, so it doesn't matter which side you pick, right? But if it's a bride and groom, or if it's two grooms, they're both the star of the show. But if it's a bride and groom, generally the bride is the star of the show. That's, how, that's generally, that's how it is, right? So I'm gonna take this spot and my camera, my wide camera is gonna go on that side and I'm gonna stay on this side. Why? Because if I'm not allowed to move, when they do their vows and they face each other, I have now got the face of my bride and I've got her the whole time as the close-up okay and my wide will have my groom okay but thankfully Cam's very 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 um, you know it's very uh, what's the word relaxed and he's let us stand anyway so he said I could stand down the middle of the aisle even though he said down I've I can stand down the middle of the aisle I don't want to get in the guest way and I don't want to be that videographer who is obscuring this wonderful family moment that's going to happen right so i will probably kneel down as she's coming down the aisle why because if i kneel down most of the people are looking at pat or they're looking at Faz as she comes down the aisle they won't be looking at me and they're standing up i can still get the clear shot down the aisle and i can still get a reaction shot of pat if i want now the other thing to remember is that when Faz comes down the aisle he will already be are you nervous very nervous he's already nervous right most likely he's already going to be having anticipation before she comes down the aisle so i want to be shooting him before and i want to say hey pat pretend i'm not here just focus on fast she's coming da, 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 da. and now i'm getting out of the way so i'm filming him as he's getting ready and if i'm lucky you know he might give me a or he might wipe his eye or he might give me a smile or he might do something with the best man that is now a great reaction shot so when Faz is coming down the aisle, when we cut in our edit, I can cut back and forth between. And because of the magic of editing, it doesn't look obvious that, you know, that these, it doesn't look obvious that it didn't happen at the same time. They would just think, wow, how did you get both shots at the same time? And that's kind of what we're doing. So now I've got, I'm, I'm, so pretend she's about to come. He, you know, the vicar said, all rise. So now he's standing. So she hasn't come to the door yet. He's breathing in, he's nervous. There you go, look. So I've got that shot, fantastic. Cool. And now the bride is coming down the aisle and now I'm going to get her come down the aisle. Now, what are my settings for her come down the aisle? I could shoot it manually. The risk there, well, if you've got focus peaking, you're just going to have to keep adjusting focus as she comes down the aisle. Again, that's something that you should practice. I use, on my Sony A7S III's, like I said, the autofocus is amazing. It's got eye tracking. I kind of going to trust the camera to do its job. Um, and the great thing about with the, paired with the Sony uh, 1.2 is I can override it if in case the camera makes a mistake. And I can constantly punch in to see that it's, it's in focus. So that's brilliant. So Faz, are you ready to come down the aisle? Yeah. 
Are you ready? No, I'm joking. <laughs> so she, let's pretend she's now going to come down the aisle. I've got my reactions of Faz. Um, oh, sorry, Pat. I've got my reactions of Pat already. And now she's coming down the aisle. I am sticking it in um, autofocus. I'm locking onto um, our beautiful bride. And it, it, it's amazing. The, it's the, the eye autofocus is now tracking her face. So Faz, you're, gonna, Faz, you're now gonna come down the aisle. I'm holding still and I'm not moving. If I move, I'm moving my body slowly. She's coming, she's coming, she's coming. And then I will move out of the way because I know my wide has got the camera and then I'll quickly come over here to get the reaction, okay? The great thing about the autofocus is it's already tracking his face. So I don't have to worry. It's kind of doing my job for me. It's kind of cheating. But if I was manually focusing, I probably wouldn't shoot at 1.8. I probably would um, shoot at maybe like f4, f4, f4.5 to give me the greatest chance of getting some of that in focus. And again, slow-mo, and I'm just slowly focusing and then I'm moving out of the way, okay? So the other option I could, right, so the magic of, sin, the magic of this thing, so Faz, we're going to reverse. So come, you're going to go back down the aisle, like reverse, blah, 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 the magic of, you know, this. She's going to go back up the aisle. If I shoot down here, for me, I get the cinematic shot of her coming down the aisle, okay? But I lose, potentially, that moment at the top of the aisle because I have to move. So when she's halfway down the aisle, I have to move over here to get in position for when they have that moment at the top of the aisle, I know my safety's covering me, right? On the flip side, I could shoot the whole thing from here and focus on Faz coming down the aisle. So Faz, now you're gonna do the whole thing again. Again, my eye auto focus is, is tracking it, doing a beautiful job of tracking. And I'm literally just moving the camera. And now as they see each other, I've got that moment and they're happy to see each other. And I've got the whole thing. And it's all at one angle. There is no right or wrong. It's purely a personal choice and it'll de de depend on the venue. Like it might be like this, imagine they did this all up with flowers and I want that shot coming down the aisle. I might take a risk and shoot her a quarter of the way down the aisle and then move to here. It's entirely up to you and whatever you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable moving when you first start out, maybe just pick a spot here because this is probably the safest spot and you're going to get everything. You're not really going to make any mistakes here. So that's pre uh, generally what I would choose. So that's basically everything we want to think about when the bride is coming down the aisle. I think I've covered everything. So remember, when you come in, make sure you introduce yourself to the, uh, whoever's the uh, charge, the reverend, the uh, officiant, say hello. Mike him, say hello to the groom. Mike him, get your, your other mic in place so it's there. Set up your wide camera. Make sure the settings are the same on both cameras in terms of white balance and picture profile. And then pick your spot. Uh, and don't forget to get reactions before the bride comes in because that's going to be great to cut to in the video and then pick your spot for when the bride comes down. Are you going to be here, get the safety shot of her coming down, there's nothing wrong with that, or are you going to go for something maybe a little bit more cinematic in terms of her, that shot as she comes down the aisle, then make sure you've got to run into place and get that. It's entirely up to you, uh, whatever you want to do. So we've done the bride come down the aisle, so now we're getting into the real meaty part of the ceremony where we're coming to the vows. The main thing I think, not the main thing, but one of the main things you need to think about is when we move, we want to move discreetly so that although we're trying to record this whole thing, we also don't want to detract from the live feel of the event. And a wedding is really like a dance. And there are certain bits where people move, where if you move, they're not even going to notice that you're moving. So for example, if you're in a church and they do hymns, that's a great time to move from one place to another because people are generally singing, they're not thinking about it. But another great time to move is when they meet at the top of the aisle, the vicar is probably going to say something like, take your seats. You may take your seats. You may take your seats. Yeah, you may take your seats. As everybody's sitting down, invariably, human nature, they're going to talk to each other, chat, they're going to fiddle with their bags. That's a good time for me to move around the couple over here. No one is going to notice me doing that, right? You never want to move across here. You probably don't want to go behind the vicar and reverend because usually that's like holy, like a holy place. You can ask them. Sometimes they'll let you go. That's fine. Here, I thought you were a relaxed vicar. No, don't go on my altar. Uh, don't go on the where the trees are. Don't go where the trees are, right? Now, why I would come over here is because I'm going to have to move this wide angle um, because it was set to Faz coming down the aisle. I'm now I'm going to move it to the couple. And this is my safety. 
It's on manual focus and it's on F5 at 100. I'm going to punch in and I've got Faz in focus. I've got Pat in focus because it's F5. They are most likely not going to move from that spot. Um, if they move, it might be because we have a reading. It might be because um, they're going to sit down and he's going to, uh, the, the vicar's going to give a sermon or something like that. Then I'm going to have to reposition this camera. But today, for our little elopement wedding, um, they are not moving. They are staying there. In a registry office wedding, they probably won't move as well. So they're staying here. So that's fine. That's my wide camera and it's here. If, for example, they had a reader, this would then swivel around to the reader. If the vicar starts to give a servant sermon, we just swivel it around and this becomes my safety for the, um, the sermon. The sermon? Yeah, the sermon. Um, if there's a hymn, I just leave it on the couple and that's fine. So for the purpose of this, um, we're, I've now repositioned it. So now we're getting to the bit where they give their vows. So you are here going to have to pick your battles, right? Sometimes in, in a ceremony, um, you can't keep moving to each side when they give their vows. I've picked Faz as the, like the star of the show. I'm taking the risk on that. And so when they give their vows, I'm just going to um, stay here and I'm just going to film her here with my clear image zoom again, which I can punch in. I don't have to move and I can zoom in. So actually I'll film that. I can zoom in and zoom out. And I know that I've got a pretty good image of Faz and I can then come out on clear image zoom and I've got a different shot and I've got my wide shot here. You could also say that once this has been fixed, another thing that you can do is you could choose to get the bride's face for the, there's two parts of the vows, right? There's a ring exchange and there's the vows bit. I could get Faz's face for the vows and then when they do the rings, because invariably the celebrant's going to say, do we have the rings? The best man's going to step up as he steps up. That's another chance that I can move to the other side. So I could film all the vows on this side. So um, Pat, you ready to give your vows? Declare your unlying, undying love for Faz. Yes. He's going to make this up. So don't judge us. Um, don't write in and say he said the wrong thing. So I'm now filming him. So just say whatever you want. Or don't say whatever you want. Just pretend. <laughs> so now I'm feel oh, that was a nice little moment, right? Um, now that was a nice little moment. I've got a nice little reaction of Faz. Now, when I go to the other side, I'm going to get nice little reactions of uh, Pat. I can now cut that over this footage here. We don't know when that kind of happened, and it looks like hey, again, we've got very different angles. So pretend now that they've done their vows. I filmed um, Faz, so I'm filming her. And they're saying the vows and now she's crying and she's really emotional and she's just loving the fact that he's committing the rest of her li his life to her. And that's fantastic. And now the celebrant's going to ask, does anybody have the rings? Does anybody have any objections? <laughs> he's got any objections. Uh, <laughs> Tiffany's put her hand up and saying we're going over time. No, I'm joking. Right. So any objections or the rings or something like that, that's my chance to come across and move to this side. And now they're doing rings. And so now... Faz is doing her vows to Pat. My wide camera is capturing her saying all this stuff. I'm now filming um, Pat and filming his reaction. Okay. The other position that you could take is you could come down the aisle, down the middle of the aisle and get this shot here. Again, if we bend down, that makes us discreet. If we don't move, we can stay in the middle of the aisle here. As long as the vicar has cleared it, or the reverend has cleared it, or the celebrant has cleared it, that we're allowed to move. I now have both of them in shot. And I can get that really cool, loving shot there. And they're looking at each other. And again, with my clear image zoom, I can punch in and I get a really close look. And now they're really smiling and laughing at each other. That's fantastic. And now I can come right back out and I've got a different shot. Now, Again, remember when you're hand holding three points of contact, one, two, and three. Okay. Again, the settings in my camera aren't changing because I set them when she was coming down the aisle. The set, the light hasn't changed. So there's no need to change my camera settings. Everything's perfect. Everything's fantastic. So, um, they're there. And, um, for the purposes of, uh, let's say I've now picked this spot for the rings. I'm going to stay here because we know what's coming. It's the first kiss, or in this case, it's going to be the first hug. Or the first, let's do a high five. 
Let's just uh, first high five. So we just got married, they're really happy. Cool, yeah, oh, that's fantastic. Uh, and I've got my shot and that's amazing. Uh, and then what's gonna happen after this, they're probably gonna do signing the registers. As they sign the registers, if there's guests, that's when people are gonna be laughing, talking. Again, that's not another chance for you to walk up and down the aisle, get some B-roll, get some people laughing and smiling, which again, you can use in your video during the ceremony. Um, uh, or it's a nice chance for you to check your cameras, get a breather, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the ceremony. So they've had the first kiss, they signed the register, everything's legal. Now the, the next part is the confetti. They're coming down, they're gonna, and it's a, a confetti, it's an iconic shot. Like it's a lot of joy, right? And, um, but generally speaking, here's a few tips when it comes to confetti. Um, the honest truth is no one usually knows what's happening right there's a few people who know what's happening and uh, people will walk out of the church they'll grab some flowers and then they'll be like well where do we stand it is okay at this point and if you feel like someone needs to give you permission i now give you permission to take over at this point this is one of the few parts in a wedding where it's, you're allowed to use your authority as the videographer or the photographer because nobody knows what's going on usually what's happening because the bride and groom are in the church it happens so happens that we're inside and sometimes this can happen as they're walking down so it's fine, but the same principles that apply. Usually what I tell everybody is like, hey everybody, they're coming down, we're really excited, please throw the uh, confetti up. I usually, confetti lines, they, people usually need to be closer than they think. So guys, come a bit closer, come a bit closer. No, not the bride and groom, but the, our guests, come a bit closer, come a bit closer. Because when they throw that up, we want, we, want, we, want people's, we want people in the shot and we want that, okay? So now they're ready and I will tell the couple, Guys, don't go, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I'm, I'm comfortable doing that. If you're not comfortable doing that, you don't have to do that. I'm just saying, I'm just giving you permission that if you want to, you can, okay? Again, what would I do in this shot? I've got my safety set up here as a wide. You don't have to do that. I just like to throw it up because it's, it's there. So I might as well just leave it on. Who knows, I might get lucky and get something. Usually, it's not that great for the confetti shot, but I will have it on and I will have it recording. Um, if he presses record, so I've got it there. It's usually not as clean as this. And then I'm gonna talk to the photographer about what they're gonna do. Some photographers like to walk down the aisle, in which case you're gonna to have to walk with them. Other photographers like to stand at the back of the aisle and get the whole shot. It's good to, good to be kind. It's good to, you're a team, we're all on the same side, so it's always good to talk to them about what they wanna do. You do not wanna be that videographer who stood in the middle of that iconic shot that they were trying to get, okay? So let's say they are, let's say it's a walking back couple, a uh, walking back for the photographer. Um, I will then most likely shoot on autofocus because I trust the camera autofocus and I trust to move into position and then I can override with the manual focus. If we're standing at the top of the aisle, I will ask the photographer high or low. What does that mean? Do they want to go high and I will go low? Or do they want to go low and I will go high? Or are we going to go side by side? Again, we're a team. And these are things that sometimes you're not even thinking about at weddings, but it's good to, to know, okay? So let's say for the purposes of this, uh, Cam is my photographer who's also filming this and he's decided that we we're going to stay at the back. We're going to stay at the back, Cam? Yeah, we're staying at the back. So, and you're going high and I'm going to go low, okay? There you go. So I'm going to go low. I'm going to set my point. Um, so we can get a bit arty. We can get a bit arty with the confetti, right? I could set my manual focus on Cam's hands. And I know that when they cross that line, they're going to be in focus. So they're going to be out of focus. They come into focus. They go out of focus. It could be symbolic of life or something. I don't know. They, they were out of focus before they met each other. They met... understand. No, Siri does not understand, right? I don't understand either. But these are, things that we, these are things that we make on the fly, okay? So we could do that, or I could use my autofocus and track them all the way down the aisle. I'm going to use autofocus here, um, and I'm going to set it on the couple. Guys, are we ready? Okay. They're really excited about cleaning this up. Okay, here we go. Three... And so when I say go, three, two, one, go. Yay, fantastic, tracking them. And then I'm gonna move quickly out of the way and let them come. So that's completing the confetti shot. Um, and I'm getting out of the way. <laughs> and then we're gonna to go to the next section. How does it feel to be married, guys? So Amazing. Yeah, wow. they've just met each other. Like we just bringing people together, one, one, one marriage and one video at a time. So this concludes the ceremony bit. Now probably what's gonna happen is a mad dash for me to get my cameras. Don't forget to get your mics off the groom. 
okay? And off the celebrant before they walk off. Make sure you get your mics. Um, and then get all your stuff in the car. And now we're gonna to go to the next section. So this concludes the ceremony. Thanks for uh, joining in on this segment. In the next segment, we're gonna talk about the reception and everything, all the joy that comes with filming that.